We've already examined some of Salentium PC's air cooling products and have continually been impressed by their high quality for the given price points. In this one, we're taking a look at a foray into all-in-one liquid cooling for the vendor. That's with the Navis F240 and F240 ARGB. So how will this 240 millimeter liquid cooler perform? And how will its value appear with a price tag of 75 pounds for the non-RGB version or 85 pounds for the ARGB fan version? Let's take a closer look. Mountain accessories and hardware provided for all modern Intel platforms, as well as AMD AM4, not Threadripper though. You get some cables for handling the fans and connections, plus there's a tube of Pactum PT3 thermal paste, which I always like to see included. A pleasant surprise to us was that Salentium PC has pre-applied the cooling fans. This just gives you one less installation task and makes the process a little bit quicker. Can't argue with that. Salentium PC uses a conventional 27 or 28 millimeter thick aluminium radiator. And of course this is black aluminium 240 millimeter class. It doesn't however have fins that extend to the entire thickness. So that is something to bear in mind versus some of the slightly larger coolers, particularly from Arctic for example. There is some form of fill drain port on the unit, but that's not really intended for user applications, probably a maintenance something or other for warranty purposes. The liquid tubes are around about 390 millimeters in length and are covered by a high quality attractive braiding. Flexibility of the tubes is positive, especially when coupled with the reasonable degree of movement for the entry points of the pump block unit. A well-sized bay copper cold plate is used to extract heat from a CPU and feed that through to the liquid cooler. Despite being bay copper in form, Salentium PC highlights compatibility with liquid metal thermal interface material if you're feeling fancy. I prefer that the cold plate is void of pre-applied thermal paste personally, particularly as Salentium PC includes a 1.5 gram tube, which is sufficient for multiple applications. Physically very chunky, the pump lock unit features an integrated mounting bracket for the Intel and AMD platforms that this cooler supports. This is a unique design as most cooler vendors competing against Salentium PC will generally use detachable brackets for supporting Intel or AMD. I guess Salentium PC here has the benefit of ease of installation because it's one less piece to think about and one less piece for a user to install. However, the key downside to that is if there's a new platform that comes out with different mounting holes, then upgradability for this cooler is going to be severely impacted as far as I can tell. PWM control is used for the ceramic bearing pump and this allows the unit to operate in a speed range of 1600 to 2600 RPM, which is ideal for noise output. Interestingly, there's no LED lighting on the pump housing, which feels like a bit of a missed opportunity for an ARGB liquid cooler, in my opinion. The pair of Fluctus 120 PWM ARGB, or non-ARGB in this example, fans come pre-applied with the CPU cooler. These fans are rated at a speed range of 300 to 1800 RPM via their four pin PWM control. The two fans are daisy chained together on the radiator, meaning that only a single four pin header is required to power them, and that's smart and convenient for cable management. Salentium PC uses a fluid dynamic bearing inside the fans, and there are some clear optimizations that highlight the uh, pressure biased application for these fans, notably on the blades. As far as ARGB control goes, that's handled by the conventional three pin header, and the software for your motherboard will control the lighting. This means that there's no requirement for third party or Salentium PC specific software and synchronization with your other components should be seamless. Given the smart daisy chain of the pre-installed fan cables, cable management is very easy indeed. There's just a pair of cables leaving the pump block unit, so that's SATA power and four pin PWM control. And then the four pin PWM and three pin ARGB fan cables can be hidden easily behind the motherboard tray without sprawling across the CPU socket area. Warranty is just okay on the £75 Navis F240 and the £85 Navis F240 ARGB. Three years for a modern all-in-one liquid cooler is... <laughs> It's fine at that price point, but it's hardly inspiring. 
The fans are rated at 100,000 hours mean time between failure though, so that's absolutely fine. I guess the point that I'm making is that particularly tough competition will come from the likes of Arctic and Corsair, which really are the big hitters at this sub £90 price point. And they're offering five plus year warranties on their models. So three is fine, but it does look a little bit slim when viewed through a certain perspective. Installation was very quick and easy, thanks in large to Solentium PC's pre-applied hardware, so the mounting bracket and the fans. All we needed to do was insert the threaded standoffs into the default AM4 backplate. We then applied paste and positioned the pump block unit. And once the set of four springs and thumb screws were tightened, the block was in position. Our test system is the usual go-to CPU cooling hardware. So that's a Ryzen 9 5950X processor overclocked to 4.45 gigahertz at 1.312 volts in the BIOS. So that's over 220 watts of package power typically. And we also test a precision boost overdrive to see what the coolers can push to. The motherboard is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master, which has a superb VRM solution with good cooling on it. The graphics card is a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super with its zero decibel mode so that we don't interfere with the fan usage on the liquid cooler. Clean power comes from a Seasonic titanium rated TX1000 one kilowatt power supply. And our chassis is a fractal design Meshify 2 with three 140mm fans, two as intake and one as exhaust. For testing, we use a 30 minute looped run of Cinebench R23 NT and we record the steady state CPU temperature towards the end of that 30 minute run. Ambient is maintained around about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius and where it does deviate outside of that window very slightly, we will put in additional test runs to ensure the validity of our data. As always, if you want more details on our test procedures and our comparison data and some of the other coolers that we've worked with, then check out some of our previous cooling videos on the Kickeroo YouTube channel, and more importantly, check out the written Kickeroo webpage where you can find all that in-depth detail. Let's jump into the test results. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. Running at 47 dBA in our test system, noise output from the Salentium PC Navis F240 ARGB is reasonable when it comes to liquid coolers. The noise output is very slightly better than the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 and its 2200 RPM fans. 47 dBA at full 1800 RPM fan speeds is certainly audible, but it isn't too unbearable for periods of heavy load. Plus, there's the strong 300 to 1800 RPM PWM control curve of the fans to further improve noise output. Full fan speed cooling performance for an overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X processor is strong from Salentium PC. The 240mm Navis F240 ARGB is very marginally behind the more expensive 240mm Be Quiet Compester. But Salentium PC's cooler manages to outperform the budget-friendly Cougar Aqua 240 ARGB by a slim margin. In order to get a unit running at 40 dBA noise output, we had to restrict the pair of fans down to 65% fan speed. This translated into around 1450 RPM operating speed according to the UEFI and HW Info readings. Cutting about a third off the fan speed to hit 40 dBA noise output is actually quite reasonable. We aren't choking the cooler too significantly in favour of noise, but we also have some capacity available if better temperatures are required. When locked at 40 dBA noise output, the Salentium PC Navis F240 ARGB actually manages to very slightly improve its performance offering versus the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 240mm by matching its delta temperature. There's clear headroom to the other 240mm all-in-one in our charts too, that's the Cougar Aqua 240 ARGB, because Salentium PC wins here. Next up is the Precision Boost Overdrive set of results. It's critical to note that small differences in the displayed delta temperature are not as important for our PBO testing, because the clock speed and cooling power achieved are more important metrics. With the processor running in Precision Boost Overdrive mode, once again, we see solid performance from the Salentium PC Navis F240 ARGB cooler that has it matching the 240mm Be Quiet Silent Loop 2. In fact, the Navis F240 ARGB actually manages a slightly higher power level dissipated, albeit for the same CPU clock speed. So this is a draw between these two. Looking at the other budget 240mm all-in-one, Cougar's Aqua 240 ARGB cannot keep up with the Salentium PC offering and is once again beaten by a couple of degrees. VRM cooling performance is uninspiring for the Navis F240 ARGB. That's the case with the cooler running at 100% fan speed 
and when locked to 40 dBA fan speeds. The Cougar Aqua 240 ARGB is just as bad as Salentium PC's unit when it comes to VRM cooling, but Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 competitor is a few degrees better in this test. We can summarize the Salentium PC Navis F240 ARGB cooler quite nicely. This is a well-priced, sensibly designed 240mm liquid cooler that offers stellar cooling performance. You also get perfectly tolerable maximum noise output, as well as a solid fan speed curve control mechanism and a PWM pump. Cooling performance that is comparable and competitive against a premium and more expensive 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler, that is the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2, is a positive for the Salentium PC unit. And it was also good to see that the cooler's competitive performance was maintained when locked to 40 dBA noise output. I like the ARGB Lighten implementation because it's simple yet effective. Personally, I think handing over control to the motherboard software is an ideal approach for most CPU coolers, unless you're Corsair. And the LED lighting was bright and smooth with good color accuracy. I was, however, surprised to see no LED lighting on the pump block cover or near that S logo, because this seems like a bit of a missed opportunity, if I'm being perfectly honest. But that's just my opinion, so if you disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. While installation for the cooler is very straightforward and quick, thanks to the pre-installed fans and the pre-applied motherboard bracket, I can't help but feel that that bracket is going to limit the usability of this cooler if you upgrade platform in, say, three or four years' time. And in regards to the warranty, three years is fine, it's just okay for a £75 liquid cooler or an £85 ARGB liquid cooler. But it's hardly inspiring when the big competitors such as Arctic and Corsair both have units in a similar price range with warranties over five years. Overall, the Salentium PC Navis F240 ARGB is a competent all-in-one liquid cooler that offers up stellar performance for its very reasonable price tag. The fan speed curves are effective, cooling performance is strong, and I like the included ARGB lighting. I don't have any problems giving this unit a recommendation based on my testing, as we typically see from Salentium PC. Simple, yet effective. Can't argue with that. I've been Luke Hill for Kick Group. Thank you for watching our video review of the Salentium PC Navis F240 and ARGB version liquid cooler. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Are you quite impressed with what Salentium PC has brought to the market here? Would you like to see a bit more on the warranty? What do you think of the RGB lighting? Let us know. If you like this video, do all that usual YouTube stuff. So like, subscribe, follow the channel. Interact with us on Discord and other social media. Buy a cool t-shirt on merch store. And make sure you do check out the main written review on the Kicker website. That really does help us out. And I will catch you in the next one.